Mari here with First Updates Now. I'm at the San Antonio FIT District with 6377, the Howdy Bots. Um, I'm here with Dunnigan, Emily, Jack, and Tyler, and we're going to be talking about their robot. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. The Charged Up competition season is here. We have a ton of live Twitch and YouTube content coming to you. All of our uploads and archives, including shows, behind the bumpers, finalysis, and more, are available at youtube.com slash firstupdatesnow. Check out all of our live shows on Mondays and Tuesdays at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow. We're going to start with Dunnigan with the overall um, design of the robot. So at the very start of the season, we realized very early on that we wanted to be very low and we wanted to be able to really fly over that charging station in order to cycle fast and be able to be able to work around with three robots as we were cycling. So we have a 23 inch frame perimeter um, and we have this um, design here that allows us to get really, really low. Um, the other thing we're doing is we actually have our modules in the high configuration instead of the low configuration. Um, which is something that we haven't seen a lot of teams do and that allows us to not bottom out as we're going over the charging station Even if it doesn't tip um, Even if it doesn't tip down for us um, So getting into the robot here. We have our shoulder mechanism. We have the elevator This two-stage there's a wrist and an intake at the end. So the shoulder is a single piece of billet aluminum on each side that makes it very stiff um, and it allows us to get all the precision we need for the gearbox all right in that one part. Um, it, also helps, it also helps us integrate a whole bunch of components into a very tight space. So this piece of billet is the battery mount. It is also the, the three-stage gearbox for the um, arm. Uh, it has the tensioners for the chain in here. And then we've also got this little parking tine that's attached at the bottom, and that jams into the gearbox when we raise the arm so that we can start in a legal starting configuration. The elevator is our own custom two-stage design. Um, it's, it's capstan driven, so instead of having a drum like you normally would, um, where it's rigidly attached to the spool and it spools in and out, we've got so many wraps on here that the friction allows you to drive it like you would a chain or a pulley. Um, the next thing up here is we've got these bearing blocks, which are repeated everywhere. Um, it's one part that's mirrored to do both the bearings for the side and the bearings for the uh, inside face here. And as an added bonus, because they're only attached by one bolt at the front and a little machined boss going into a reamed hole at the back, when you remove this bolt, you can pivot out the whole bearing block and the stages come in and out real easy. Um, so now I think we'll move on to Emily to talk about some of our driving and match strategy. So our general driving strategy for this competition is our auto, we play, we dump one, cu one cone into the bottom middle, and then we grab a cube and we place it into the high middle. That allows us, after auto ends, we fill the high and then we focus on all the low hybrids to get the ranking point. Now, if you notice, we're very fast and we just fly over the charging station. We spent maybe a whole day with our regular old drive base going over and over the drive charging station as fast as we could to see what could break. And we noticed that the driving pins, driving gears in the gearbox would just shatter because they're aluminum on steel. So we found a solution, we fixed it, and now we can fly over those with ease. Now next we're going to have Tyler with programming. Um, hi. So the main thing I really want to talk about that I think is really smart that we did on this robot uh, is the way we control our arm because you've got three degrees of freedom here um, and you don't want to waste time doing one motion at a time. That's slow. Um, hypothetically, you could treat this shoulder and this elevator as two independent linear mechanisms, but that has a couple of issues. One, the elevator is a bit faster. It'll get to its target before the shoulder will. Two, you are extending too early. You are risking exposing your elevator to shear forces and you could collide with the grid. And three, if you're extending earlier, you are making your shoulder fight a whole lot more inertia than it needs to because torque is obviously proportional to radius. 
Um, the way that we solved this is kind of in two ways. The first is to make sure that both of these elements get to their set point at the same time, we made our extension a function of our shoulder. So the shoulder is independent, it just does its own thing, and then the elevator computes its own set point based on the set point of the shoulder. So in addition to that, instead of using just a linear function to relate these two, we actually use a power function, because if you think about what a power monomial looks like, you've got like quadratic, cubic, and so on. And what that basically means for this is that most of that movement on the y-axis, which is our extension, happens towards the end. So it's really easy math to implement, and it means we get smooth motion that doesn't waste any effort throwing inertia around. It works really well, and it was, it's really simple to implement. Uh, we can demonstrate that now. At our mid-set point, come to the bottom. High, high set point, M5 bottom, nut, and you can see how all most of that extension M5 happens towards the end. It's super fast, it's super smooth, um, and yeah, now I'm going to hand it off to Jack to talk a bit about our intake. So I mainly worked on the intake this season, and right off the bat you can see that we have a three roller full length design, so that really helps us get both game elements and get them really quick and effectively. So. One of the features that we designed for is to pick up off the floor by grabbing the base of the cone. So if you get a cone, this will actually align with the floor. And so if you have a cone coming in, it gets intaken really quickly uh, from just driving right up and then you can cycle really quick. And then over here, we have uh, the place where the cube gets intaken. So the cube fits in this larger space between these two rollers and uh, that really cradles the cube. So the way we power all these rollers is with, um, come over here, we have a serpentine belt. And so I've never seen another team do this for the intake as a solution, but basically it's a double-sided belt that runs over every single pulley. And but for this one, it inverts. So when we intake here, these rollers run opposite and these rollers run opposite. So we can just run the motor in two different directions to get both game pieces without having to have extra complexity of gears or anything else to invert the motion. And then moving on, we have a pivot back here. That's a gearbox uh, that attaches to the elevator. And it's just a big reduction on a uh, Falcon to all the way back to the stationary gear that's mounted on the gearbox. So something I noticed while I was watching matches is that when climbing onto the charge station, if there's already two robots up there, they're able to get on without tipping it. So Dunnigan, if you will, can you explain how that works? Yeah, so this was actually a goal of ours in, during the season. And the reason um, we can do that is because we designed it to be very light. Um, we are about 95 pounds with the bumper and the batteries. Um, and we've also um, shoved our bumpers all the way up to the top of the bumper zone, and we've got the ground clearance to not bottom out anywhere. So we are very smooth going up and over. We're not rubbing anywhere. Um, we're, pro we're providing minimal downwards force to the charge station when we go up it, so we can go up real smooth. Thank you for that much. I am very impressed with this robot, and I am looking forward to y'all at Alliance Selection. So... This is Mari with First Updates Now, signing off from San Antonio with 6377. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SolidWorks, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SolidWorks.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. The Charged Up competition season is here. We have a ton of live Twitch and YouTube content coming to you. All of our uploads and archives, including shows, behind the bumpers, analysis, and more, are available at youtube.com slash firstupdatesnow. Check out all of our live shows on Mondays and Tuesdays at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.